Welcome to Rigid Academy, where we simplify complex construction engineering concepts and bring real on-site knowledge directly to you. In today's video, we're exploring one of the most essential and important topics in modern construction, the basics of steel structures on a construction site. Steel structures form the backbone of countless projects worldwide, from industrial warehouses and bridges to stadiums, skyscrapers, and modular buildings. Whether you're an aspiring structural engineer, a site supervisor, or a construction manager, understanding how steel structures are planned, fabricated, assembled, and maintained will give you a huge professional advantage. So grab your helmet, put on your safety boots, and let's dive deep into the fascinating world of steel construction. Section 1. What are steel structures? Let's start with the basics. A steel structure is essentially a framework made up of steel members. Beams, columns, trusses, girders, and connections that work together to resist loads and transfer them safely to the foundation. Steel is known for three main characteristics high strength, ductility, and versatility. Unlike concrete, which mainly resists compression, steel can resist both tension and compression effectively. That's why steel is used for long span structures high-rise buildings, and applications requiring high load capacity with minimal weight. From a design perspective, steel structures are also modular, meaning they can be fabricated in workshops and assembled on-site like a giant 3D puzzle. This approach minimizes site work, reduces construction time, and improves accuracy. Section 2. Advantages of Steel Structures Why is steel so popular in modern construction? First, speed. Fabricated steel elements can be produced while foundations are still being built, which shortens project timelines dramatically. Second, precision. Every beam, column, and bolt hole is cut and drilled using computer-controlled machines following detailed shop drawings. Third, sustainability. Steel is one of the most recyclable materials on Earth. Almost all structural steel used today contains a percentage of recycled content. And finally, Adaptability. Steel structures can be modified, extended, or even dismantled and reused. A major advantage for temporary or modular buildings. Section 3. Key Components of a Steel Structure. Let's break down the main components you'll encounter on a construction site. Columns. These are the vertical load-carrying members. They transfer the loads from the beams and floors above to the foundations below. Beams. Horizontal members that carry loads such as slabs, roofing systems, and equipment. Girders. Larger primary beams that support smaller secondary beams. Bracings. Diagonal members that resist lateral forces caused by wind, earthquakes, or crane movement. Purlins and girts. Smaller elements that support roofing and wall cladding. Connections. Bolts, welds, and gusset plates that tie everything together. And finally, Base plates, thick steel plates placed between the column and the concrete foundation. These ensure proper load transfer and alignment during installation. Each of these components is part of a carefully coordinated design that must meet safety, strength, and serviceability criteria defined by structural codes. Section 4. From Design to Fabrication Before any steel member reaches the site, it goes through several stages design, detailing, and fabrication. During the design phase, structural engineers analyze loads such as dead loads, live loads, wind, snow, and seismic forces. They determine the size and shape of each member using design software like SAP2000, ETABS, or STAAD.PRO. Next comes detailing where each component is drawn precisely in 2D or 3D using programs like Tecla Structures or AutoCAD. Shop drawings specify every dimension, hole, weld, and connection. In the fabrication phase, steel plates and sections are cut, drilled, welded, and painted in a controlled workshop environment. Dimensional tolerances are extremely tight, often within a few millimeters, because small fabrication errors can lead to major alignment issues on site. Section 5 transportation, and handling. Once fabrication is complete, the steel members are transported to the construction site. 
Each element is labeled with an identification number corresponding to the erection drawings. Handling and transportation require special attention, especially for long beams or heavy columns to prevent bending, twisting, or coating damage. Before unloading, site supervisors should ensure there's a designated storage area, level ground, and sufficient access for cranes and forklifts. Remember, proper planning during logistics can save days of rework and prevent costly mistakes. Section 6. Erection Process on Site The erection of a steel structure is one of the most critical and visually impressive phases of construction. Here's a step-by-step -step overview of the typical process. Foundation Preparation The site team checks anchor bolts, base plates, and concrete levels. Accuracy here determines how smoothly the entire structure goes up. Column erection. Using cranes, columns are lifted and placed on their base plates. Temporary supports or guy wires are used until the structure stabilizes. Beam installation. Beams are then lifted and connected to columns using high-strength bolts or sight welds. Proper alignment and leveling are verified using total stations or laser levels. Bracing and stability. Bracings are installed to ensure lateral stability. The structure becomes self-supporting as more frames are connected. Decking and cladding support. Once the primary frame is complete, secondary elements like purlins, girts, and decking sheets are installed. Final bolting and welding. After alignment is confirmed, all bolts are tightened to the required torque, and welds are completed. During this stage, communication between crane operators, riggers, and engineers is vital. Every lift must follow a safe lifting plan with clear hand signals and load charts. Section 7. Connections, Bolts and Welds Connections are the invisible heroes of a steel structure. They ensure that loads flow smoothly from one member to another. There are two main types of connections, bolted and welded. Bolted connections are the most common in field assembly. They are quick, reliable, and easy to inspect. Bolts are usually of high strength, grade 8.8 .8 or 10.9, and tightened using calibrated torque wrenches. Welded connections provide continuous joints and are typically used in fabrication workshops. They offer superior strength but require skilled welders, proper ventilation, and inspection methods such as ultrasonic testing or magnetic particle testing. In most modern projects, a combination of both methods is used. Welding in the shop, Bolting on site. Section 8. Protective coatings and fireproofing. Steel may be strong, but it's vulnerable to corrosion and high temperatures. That's why protective coatings are essential. Common surface protection systems include hot dip galvanizing, a zinc coating applied by dipping steel into molten zinc, epoxy primers and polyurethane top coats for enhanced durability and aesthetics intumescent paints or fireproof claddings to protect steel from losing strength during a fire. On site, any scratched or damaged coating must be repaired immediately before exposure to moisture. Regular inspections ensure long-term performance and aesthetics. Section 9. Quality Control and Inspection Every stage of steel construction, from fabrication to erection, involves strict quality control. Inspectors check material certificates, bolt torques, weld integrity, and alignment tolerances. Non-destructive testing, NDT methods such as ultrasonic, radiographic, or magnetic particle testing are used to detect hidden defects. Proper documentation is key. Every inspection, repair, or modification must be recorded in the quality dossier before final handover. Section 10. Safety Considerations on Site Working with steel structures involves significant risk, heavy lifting, working at height, welding, and electrical hazards. Essential safety practices include mandatory use of personal protective equipment, PPE, helmet, harness, gloves, and safety boots, proper rigging and lifting equipment inspected daily, fall protection systems like lifelines and guardrails, clear communication protocols between riggers and crane operators, daily toolbox meetings to discuss potential hazards. Remember, no schedule is more important than a worker's safety. 
a strong safety culture saves lives and ensures productivity. Section 11. Common Mistakes to Avoid Even experienced teams can make mistakes. Here are some common ones to watch out for. Misaligned anchor bolts during foundation works. Improper bolt tightening or use of incorrect torque. Skipping bracings during temporary erection stages. Poor surface preparation before painting. Lack of communication between design, fabrication, and site teams. Every mistake can lead to costly rework, or worse, structural instability. Prevention is always cheaper than correction. Conclusion. Steel structures combine engineering precision with construction craftsmanship. From the first drawing in the design office to the final bolt on site, every step requires coordination, accuracy, and teamwork. If you understand these fundamentals, you're not just a site engineer, you're becoming a true structural professional. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe to Rigid Academy for more detailed guides on construction and engineering. And stay tuned. Until then, keep learning, keep building, and remember, every great structure begins with solid knowledge. This is Rigid Academy, building knowledge one beam at a time.